I picked up this Atari controller. I thought it might be fun to use with game emulators. Um, it uses a DE9 female connector. You might have seen this connector in use on uh, like PC serial ports. This is not a serial connector in this case, however. Um, these uh, This connector is used on a, a couple different joysticks uh, uh, for systems. Um, I think the Sega Genesis uses a similar uh, set up and uh, the Commodore 64, I think, well I guess by extension the VIC-20 um, and I think probably the Commodore 128 uh, would use the same thing. Um, but the, uh, the, the pinouts um, for some of those have some special features. Um, even on the Atari there's the, the, the game paddles, they use some different uh, pins here for different things, but the positions um, that are just kind of a, there's contact plates in here, just kind of makes a connection to one of the ground pins. Um, that that stays pretty much the same um, across those platforms. So that means by making a device to uh, work with this on a modern PC, uh, I would also support this TAC2 joystick that I have for my Commodore 64. Um, there's products that do this already, um, but I kind of wanted to take a different twist on it. So uh, rather than having this work as an HID joystick, I want it to work as a five button keyboard. So, um, you know, one one key on the keyboard would be this direction, you know, up, down, left, right, and uh, a button for fire. The TAC2 actually has two fire buttons. They actually just do the same things, just if you're left-handed or right-handed or prefer one button over the other. Um, they map to the, the same pin. So there isn't a differentiation between <clears throat> it's not like an alternate fire, um, and it's the same pin as the, the Atari controller uses here. So um, so I want to get this to work as a, a keyboard and, and not a, like a, a USB joystick. And uh, the reason I want to do that is most games uh, and emulators support uh, keyboard input, uh, but some might require special configurations for joystick support or in some cases not support them at all. Um, a joystick that works as a keyboard seems like it offers some practical advantages, um, although the hardware I'm going to be using um, can be reprogrammed if I change my mind later and want to use it as a USB HID joystick device. So what hardware am I talking about using for this project? Uh, the Arduino Leonardo with its AVR Mega 32U4 make this easy. It's got a dedicated USB controller and the Arduino libraries to handle HID keyboard events come with the Arduino development environment. Uh, because I want to put this inside of a small project enclosure, I'm actually not going to be using the Leonardo itself, but this uh, uh, Arduino micro clone, which also has the Atmega 32U4 as found in the Leonardo. So in the Arduino IDE, I'll just select Leonardo, even though I'm technically using this guy. Um, so uh, I looked for some enclo uh, project enclosures that might be good to fit this in and Amazon I picked up this guy um, he's actually let me open that up it's got a terminal block in there that I'm I don't really want to use um, so this is like if you don't want to solder or anything here you go you want to I don't know make some weird serial connection for something you could use this guy what I think I want to try and do there's almost enough space in here. There's not quite enough space to really fit this in there. Um, but I, you know, it kind of almost lines up with the hole here. And I think it'd be great if I could put it in there and, and just have that USB available. I'm going to remove the terminal blocks here and see what I can do about trying to fit this in here. Maybe I might get desperate and try and shave a little of the end off here and, and cram all that in, inside of this guy. Okay, so to make that fit inside of my uh, case here, I uh, removed the terminals. Um, I could have done a little bit better job there, but I was in a rush. And um, I've cut off the last two pins here using some kind of heavy duty snips here. And then I sanded it down a little bit just to try to make sure that within the layers uh, I wasn't getting any um, I'm kind of looking at it here with a USB microscope. Just wanted to make sure that if there's uh, multiple layers that I wasn't getting any kind of weird shorts or anything in there. 
and it's kind of hard to do two cameras at once but taking a look at that I didn't see anything uh, anything too crazy um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, plug that in and make sure it works okay so hey great that fit actually uh, the problem uh, that I kinda ran into was uh, even though after shaving it down it fit in my enclosure uh, the USB port didn't protrude enough that I couldn't really put anything in there so I, with a hobby knife I had to kind of carve out the uh, the inside there so that I could actually get something to plug in so that could be better um, that might not have been the best choice it, it looks okay when you don't realize that it's not actually uh, connected so great there but uh, I mean it, it works it does the job it's not like it's falling out um, so I just uh, followed some pinouts from online, um, and these are actually pinouts for a uh, Sega 3 and 6 button controller, but like I said, it's uh, it's very similar to the, uh, the directional pins are the same, um, so that's compatible with my Tac 2 and my Atari controller, and if I want to throw a Sega controller on this, that, that might work uh, for some of the stuff. Um, and uh, I, I don't know if the Sega uh, controller requires like this 5 volt here. I didn't hook that up, although USB's uh, got the 5 volt supply there, so you could easily wire that. What I did do um, after removing the terminal block, the PCB that this came with was well numbered, so I didn't even have to try and figure out which pins extended where. They're just they're labeled on the silk uh, silk screen on that board. So I just you know I needed the up direction. That's pin one. I wanted. Uh, you know, my ground, I guess uh, I used eight, um, right was number four. So I just hooked those up with some wires and then uh, kind of taped that up and shoved it all and crammed it into the into the enclosure there. So, um, so that was pretty easy. It's ugly inside. I, I definitely could have done a nicer job, but um, now I just got to coat it up and, uh, and test it out. All right, let's uh, take a look at the code. Um, I'm in the Arduino. IDE, I'm using Arduino 1.6.5, and under Tools, I've got the board set to Arduino Leonardo. So even though, uh, like I said, this isn't actually the Leonardo, it uses the same processor, the uh, or the same microcontroller, um, the Atmega 32U4. So uh, as far as the Arduino IDE is concerned, uh, we're using the Leonardo, and that'll work fine. Um, I'm going to define some pins here, and what these are is uh, uh, giving friendly names to pins on the Arduino Micro Clone. So pin 2, I've got physically wired to the pin that corresponds to the fire pin on the joystick. The up position pin, I've got wired to pin 3 on the Arduino. Down position 16, right 15, left 14. The only reason I chose these pins is because they just worked well with uh, managing the wires and cramming it inside of that case. I could have used any of the available pins um, that would allow me to, I mean obviously I'm not going to use like a ground pin or something for when it has to be a GPIO pin uh, that I can program and read the state of, um, but that's pretty much any of the pins available to me. Um, then the next part here is kind of weird. Um, the keyboard USB stuff built into the Arduino um, libraries um, support a lot of keys right off the bat. Um, and actually this um, key right control that you can see here, um, I didn't have to do anything to define that key in this list because that one is built in and knows the value of that already. Uh, but I wanted to um, have my joystick work as the numeric keypad. Um, so not the number values of the numeric keypad, but the directional values of the numeric keypad. What you would get if you have numlock off and you hit the directions of the numeric keypad. Um, I only chose that just because um, I, I wanted to use it with Vice and it supports using uh, the new, the, the, you know, that, um, uh, the number keypad uh, for directions and the right control for fire. Um, it's like one of the default kind of settings to pick from so I don't have to go and define a, a my you know map my keys for my directions and stuff like that and um, most things that I would want to use this with support being able to use a numeric keypad for direction so I thought okay that works fine but the Arduino libraries don't know about uh, the values for those keys so I looked up the values in the um, USB uh, device usage table things um, it's like a PDF 
you can get online and I'll try and put a link to it in here. Um, but then you have to add 136 in decimal to to that actual value that you look up. So when I look up, you know, keypad up, and then I have to add 136 to it to get to 232. The reason I have to add 136 is just it has to do with the way the Arduino uh, library works. It basically looks to see, you know, is the value above 136? And, uh, you know, if so, then act one way. And if not, then just like basically pass that thing through. Um, and I, I guess uh, I didn't really look into it too deeply, but I think it's so that like uh, maybe printable keys, like uh, letters and stuff like that, you can just kind of pass those things through easier. Um, it's just weird. Uh, so if you're looking at the code, it's like basically check to see if the value's above 136 and then like immediately subtract 136 and that's the value we're gonna use. But it's just to meet some kind of conditional statement in there. And, uh, it doesn't really matter why, just know that it's it's like that, at least for my version of uh, the Arduino environment, and that might change, I don't know. Uh, but again, this is Arduino 1.65 I'm using, and uh, I needed to add 136 to the values that I found in the uh, USB device usage tables for those numeric keypads. Uh, the next thing I'm doing is mapping um, what keys to send based on which button is pressed. So when I press the fire, so I've got two arrays here. I've got a pins array. That's the pins that I'm monitoring on the Arduino. And then I've got the uh, keys array, and that's the you know keys that I want to press on the keyboard. So when I press the fire pin, I want to press the right uh, control key, key right control. Uh, when I press up, I want keypad up. Uh, down, keypad down, and etc. So those are just kind of mapped one to one. Then I go into my uh, setup, and what I do is for each pin, I loop for the size of the pins, and I, I set them all into um, pull up. Uh, I set the input pull up. So um, because the way these controllers work on um, the Commodore and I think the Atari and stuff, um, is that they get pulled to ground, I just decided, you know, I'm gonna do the same thing. So rather than waiting for their states to go like high and then tying them to the five volt line that may or not, uh, like, I mean, I would have to wire in five volts from the USB uh, port to, um, well, from like VCC or whatever on, on the Arduino um, and pass that through if I wanted to go high, but uh, same thing with the ground. So they really, I could have done it either way, uh, there's no reason to be like electrically compatible. I don't know why I chose ground. Uh, <laughs> uh, I guess just because that's the way that um, yeah, that's the way that the, the other system does it. You know, like what I'm like what the actual Atari does. So I figured, hey, okay, why not? Um, it's easy enough to do. So uh, sorry, that's a bit rambly. Uh, so what I'm doing to get back on track is setting each pin uh, to be pulled to the high position. So rather than just kind of floating and giving me sporadic weird data, um, if I'm not pushing uh, in a certain direction and tying that to the ground line, um, then it's going to be, the when I read the, the digital state of the pin, it will be high. It, and if I read a high value or a one value, that means I am not pressing in that direction. Uh, then keyboard begin just initiates the um, Arduino keyboard USB library stuff. Um, now I'm entering my main loop and I'm going to set key states equal to zero. We'll get back to what that does in a minute. Uh, now I'm going to loop through for each pin. Uh, same thing we did earlier when we set the input uh, pull up here. But this time what I'm going to do, and I've got some comments from things I was doing I should have taken out of here before. I, uh, you can ignore that. That's commented out. I just kind of um, in the middle of still doing some of this. I guess I forgot I left some crap in here. But uh, So what I'm doing is I'm reading, uh, using digital read, I'm reading the value, and if the value equals low, that means I'm pushing this pin, and I'm, I'm looping through for each value in the array. So I'm gonna check the fire pin, I'm gonna check the up pin, I'm gonna check the down pin, the right pin, the left pin. Um, and each, each time incrementing, um, you know, this i value here, and passing that, you know, like give me the, the first index in pins, give me the next index in pins. Okay, so if one of those are low, I need to set the corresponding key 
to be pressed down. So this is why I'm mapping the pins and the keys array as kind of a one-to-one -one thing uh, further up here. So it's just, you know, if I'm pressing fire, then press control. If I'm pressing the up pin, then press. So I can just do that all in a loop. And um, I can actually have uh, multiple keys pressed down at the same time. And so that's no problem. Uh, once I have a key pressed down, any key, one or more, I'm going to set key states equal to one because I just want to keep track of the fact that I'm pressing keys down so that when I get to this step, I can say, okay, I, I'm pressing at least one key, so I need to wait a moment um, just to have the operating system have enough time to detect that uh, you know, these keyboard events that are being sent are, are kind of like picked up and registered. I decided 10 milliseconds worked. I kind of played with this value a little bit and um, it, it seems like that's sufficient enough time without feeling like um, things aren't responsive enough to like letting go of the keyboard. Um, I don't want to kind of delay here too long because uh, I might miss an event if I, you know, if I waited for like a something huge, like a second or something like that. I might miss an event. Um, it, 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 I let go of the keys before it has a chance to kind of loop back around. Um, so 10 milliseconds, or sorry, uh, yeah, 10 milliseconds worked pretty, pretty well there. Uh, this next part then, um, what I do is um, release any of the keys that are no longer being pressed down. So again, I'm going to loop through, and if the pin state is high this time, and remember, because I'm pulling these things to high, they're only active when they're they're low. So it's it's kind of opposite of what you might expect it to be. But um, if I get a digital read and it's set to high, that means I'm not pressing that direction, and so release that key. And it doesn't matter if I tell it to release a key that isn't being held down. It's it's not going to cause any problems. So I'm going to release all of the keys individually in this loop. Um, and then I finally just kind of as an extra check because occasionally I had it where a key will get stuck. I decided, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to do like an extra, just make sure to release all the keys. And there's actually a key, uh, uh, keyboard release all function thing that I can use here. Um, and, uh, I only want to do that if none of the keys are, or, or if none of the uh, joystick positions are, are, are being pressed, right? So I'm going to loop through again and check the states of pins, but this time instead of individually um, turning them off one at a time, I, uh, I, I check the pins, I set the pin states to one. I'm just going to assume that a, a key is being held down, even though that might not be the fact. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take pin state and have it be equal to pin state and the bitwise and of the digital read value of the pin that I'm currently reading in the loop. So only if um, only if this equals one, when it ends with this, which I've previously set to one, will the pin state equal one. And so what that means is um, Again, because our kind of our logic is inverted from what we might expect here, um, one is one is high. So only when all of the pins are in the high state, by the time that we leave the for loop here, do we end up with pin state equaling one or high. So if pin state equals high after I've and it by each value of pins and itself, if it still equals to one, then I know nothing is being pressed. And so that's just kind of an extra check to make sure uh, that nothing is being pressed before I send keyboard release all, which just says any keys that I've set in the Arduino I, uh, environment here, uh, release those keys. If I'm holding something on a separate keyboard, it doesn't matter. It doesn't release those. Uh, it's only keys that I've set. So it's a safe thing to do. Um, and it's just, I, it's very annoying to have a key not released um, and so this is just, I, I threw it in there when I was changing a lot of code stuff around and I think I probably don't need it anymore, but it doesn't really hurt anything. So I left it in there. And so the code is, is pretty simple. So let's see it in action. Okay. So now I've got the joystick hooked up. Whoops. And I'm not doing very well here. I'm playing load runner. Just one of the first games I thought to grab. And I'm doing poorly at it. It's not the joystick's fault. I'm actually trying to watch it from the, uh, video screen than a recording. I should just watch it on the computer screen. 
And uh, yeah, so it feels pretty responsive. This game is kind of always, I think, uh, even on the Commodore, had times where I felt like it wasn't listening to me, and I think that's just an excuse for what I'm doing poorly. But I feel like the this is, for being a keyboard, pretty responsive. Um, if I go and press two directions at once, like up, uh, up and over, he, he climbs the ladder. I didn't like press up when I got there. I've been holding up the whole time. Um, that guy's gonna beat me to it. But so I'm just gonna press up to the corner and when I get to there, yep, see. So it's, it's registering both keys at the same time as being held down. Now I'm up left. So, um, so that works pretty well. Um, I, I did hook this up to the actual Commodore and play a little bit on both, and um, I, I didn't find that, I think if anything, having it on the emulator here seemed speedier. So, um, I'm sure if you're some video game purist, then this is probably not good enough for you, but for, for my purposes, it's totally fine. So anyways, that's my project. Um, I might do another take on this where I actually set it up as a uh, USB HID joystick. I also have some of the paddles for the Atari and because the Arduino Micro Pro thing that I used, you know, it's got ADCs available, I, it, I could probably use it to decode those paddle controllers as well, so I may end up doing that. We'll see. Okay, bye.